What's up, beautiful people? It's Courtney, welcome back and welcome. If you are new, if you are new, say hello to me in the comments because I would love to say hi back, kind of welcome you to the fam. Anyways, today I'm trying out a brand new series here on my channel that I thought it would be kind of fun to do. So this new series is going to be copycat recipes and for today's video, I'm testing out different fast food copycat recipes. So basically what this means is I'm going to be attempting recipes that are supposed to be identical to foods you get from fast food chains for this video for other videos it could be restaurants or a specific restaurant or all types of different just copycat recipes I mean who wouldn't want to make their own Big Mac before we get started I'm also having a giveaway right now for a $100 visa gift card running until May 30th and all you have to do to enter is be subscribed and if you would like an extra entry you could just follow me on Instagram it's as simple as that and anyways let's go ahead and get started with these recipes the first recipe I'm testing out is a copycat blizzard from Dairy Queen because ice cream is like my weakness. So I'm taking a Snickers bar and I'm just using half of it for this because I was trying to be like a little bit healthy but not really. So I'm just chopping it up and then I'm putting some chocolate ice cream with brownie bits into my blender and I'm also adding in the Snickers as well, getting it all in there because I could eat some serious ice cream. Okay, so the recipe said to add a little bit of milk, so I wanted to add like a tiny, tiny bit um, and then just slowly add in and then you're supposed to pulse it. So this first time I didn't add enough milk, it was still like very chunky ice cream. So I added just a tiny bit more and did a few more pulses and then I checked the consistency and it looked like a blizzard to me, it was still very chunky chunky as you could see here it's not like a super watery milkshake so I of course had to do the typical Dairy Queen test where you flip it over and mine made a mess it just fell right out of the cup so this did not come out the same consistency although I mean it did taste good because it's still ice cream this next one is a bit of a doozy and we're making Auntie Anne's bite-sized pretzels and so I'm taking a cup of warm water and then I'm also adding in a fourth of a teaspoon of granulated sugar and yeast and I will link this recipe down below because it needs so many ingredients and different measurements so all the recipes will be linked down below. So then you want to use a whisk attachment on your mixer and go ahead and mix it and once it dissolves we're going to let it sit for about 10 minutes. Then what we're going to do is add in a tablespoon and two and a half teaspoons of sugar, brown sugar, vegetable oil, and salt. So all the measurements, again, will be down below. This recipe uh, requires a lot, but in my opinion, it's totally worth it. So I'm just adding in everything as it says, and then I'm going to mix it again. Then we're going to mix in our one cup of bread flour and you do need bread flour and all purpose flour. I didn't even know bread flour was a thing honestly before this video. So yes, it's two different kinds. I believe you could substitute it and it still works. I was kind of reading on the recipe but I just decided to completely follow the recipe since I've only made pretzels like once when I was younger. Now you want to switch your attachment from the whisk to more of the bread kneading hook type of attachment and then I'm going to add in the all purpose flour. So you're just going to stir it until it's all combined. I added in the flour a little bit at a time and then we have our dough. So I'm placing it into a buttered dish and then going to cover it in saran wrap and then we need to let it rise. So you want it to be kind of warm so I'm sticking it in the oven. The oven is off but the oven light is on and the warmth from the oven light is going to help it rise. Once it's risen for about an hour and a half, you could go ahead and kind of punch the dough down and now we're going to work it to make our pretzel bites. So of course you can make regular pretzels. I did do that with some of the dough, but to get started, I'm just kind of uh, stretching it out and it said to use kind of like a jump rope motion like so just to kind of like lengthen it out and you want it to be about 24 inches and then you're just going to cut it into bite-sized pieces. Now this next step I don't think is like super necessary but again I'm just following the recipe and basically you're taking a fourth of a cup of baking soda and about two and a half to three cups of water and you want to dip your pretzel bites into there let it drain and then transfer it to your prepared baking sheet. Um, I think this is kind of weird. I don't know exactly what it's supposed to do and it is very time consuming. So I wanted to test some of it out doing this method and some without. So all the pretzel bites that you see me making, I used this baking soda solution and then the big pretzels I made, I did not. So I just made a big pretzel like this with some of the remaining dough because I had tons of dough. This recipe does 
make a lot, a lot, a lot. All you have to do is bake your pretzel bites at 425 degrees for about 8 to 10 minutes and they come out this pretty golden brown. The bottom does brown a little bit, but it doesn't taste burnt or anything like that. So once I transfer it to a plate, I'm just dipping them in melted butter and then I'm dipping them all first and then kind of letting the butter soak into them a bit to get some really good buttery flavor and then I'm rolling them in cinnamon sugar while the butter is still like a little bit damp on them to help it stick. And oh my goodness, you guys, these are delicious. You could of course just use butter and also do some sea salt on top, but they are so, so good. Andy and I uh, actually ate them all. What you're seeing here is about a third of the dough, so it makes so much and it tastes just like Auntie Anne's. For this last recipe, we're attempting to make Burger King French Toast Sticks. So I'm just taking two eggs and going to whisk them together. And honestly, I think you could really downsize this um, amount depending on how much French Toast Sticks you want. Um, for like three slices of bread, uh, this was way too much mixture. So just kind of keep that in mind. And then I'm taking some, you want some stale bread, you don't want fresh bread, and taking off the crust on them just for a more complete finished look look. So I'm just taking a few slices. The recipe said to slice it in fourths, but my bread did not look big enough, so I sliced it in thirds instead. And then what you're going to do is take your sticks and then dip them into the little mixture we made, and I'm just pouring out some cinnamon sugar here to mix them into again. So we're just gonna dip and then roll it into the cinnamon sugar, and then they're gonna be ready to go. Now, I think these actually uh, could use like a thicker bread. You really wanna use a thick bread for this because mine just wasn't thick enough. Um, you also do wanna make sure it's not fresh, that way they kind of hold their shape a little bit better. But I'm mixing in some, I'm melting some butter in a pan and then just going to let them cook on both sides. So it's basically like regular French toast. Um, this recipe wasn't anything crazy different um, to get that like Burger King crispy French toast. So this to me was not a very good recipe. It was just kind of like French toast cut into pieces. So I would not do this one again. I would try some really thick bread next time in a different recipe as well. But I mean, it's a fun way to eat French toast. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you like this idea for a new series. I would love to keep doing them. And if you missed my past couple videos, you can click on over to the side of me and I'll talk to you really soon. Bye.